to my channel and welcome to episode 9 of Powerlifting Basics. This is going to be a definitive guide to powerlifting meets. So I'll be going over why someone wants to compete, who can compete, what you need to bring to a meet, how a powerlifting meet works, and basically everything you need to know to be successful at your meet. If you haven't already, check out my other episodes in my Powerlifting Basics series. If you guys have any videos that you want me to make, leave them down in the comments below. And yeah, so we got a lot to cover, so let's get started. So first of all, there are different federations you can compete in. So I compete in USAPL, there's also USPA, and those are the main two powerlifting federations. Both federations have different rules. For example, USPA has 24 hour weigh ins, while USAPL has two hour weigh ins, and like the bar they use, and can you lift your head off the bench, or having your heels on the ground when benches. So, tiny differences. I would recommend USAPL, but if there are no local meets nearby for USAPL, then you can go for USPA. But anyway, in this video, I will be talking about USAPL. Also, there are different categories. So there's raw, equipped, and stuff in the middle. So raw is where you just wear knee sleeves and a singlet, and equipped is where you can wear a squat suit, a bench shirt, and also knee wraps. So it's just more equipment, and people can lift more when they're equipped. But they compete in different categories, and if you're watching this video, I'm probably guessing that you're gonna be competing raw, because you probably don't wear all of that equipment stuff. And most people do start out as raw lifters. So anyway, I'll be talking about raw powerlifting in general, but a lot of the rules still apply for equipped lifting. So first of all, what is a powerlifting meet? So a powerlifting meet is where someone could go to to test their squat, bench, and deadlift. And you get three attempts for each lift. And that is why someone would compete, to test their maxes. Or sometimes people compete to just have the meet experience because competing in a meet feels really different than training at home and hitting PRs at home. It's a different environment and some people like to have that. Also, some people do it to qualify for nationals or to be in the database where you are ranked with other lifters, but also people just do it to have fun. And I can say powerlifting meets are really fun and it's more about competing with yourself than competing with others. So who can compete? Literally anyone who can lift the bar can compete. You don't have to lift a certain amount of weight to compete at local meets. However, at nationals, you need to have competed in a local meet and have a high enough total in your weight class and age to qualify for nationals. But for local meets, all you have to do is be able to lift the bar. And I'm pretty sure for people under age 14, you can lift lighter than the bar and they will give you like smaller bars to lift on. So if you're under age 14, you can still compete if you don't lift the bar, I think. But anyway, all you have to do is purchase a membership for whatever federation you're in. And for USAPL, you have to renew your membership every single year. So if you have a membership, you have your member ID and that's what you use to register for meets. And next we're gonna talk about how to sign up for a meet. So first thing you wanna do is go on the federation's website and here you can see the membership and you can get a membership if you want. But we want to sign up for a meet, so we're going to the calendar. And here are a bunch of meets, and there's the date and the state. So for example, for me, I'm going to a local meet, and I want it to be in Illinois, which is where I live. So some of them would say it will be sold out, and some of them are like men only or women only, so just sign up for which one you want. So what you want to do is click registration. So each meet registration form will be slightly different, but this is how it is general. So for example, if I want to put this, I'll just type my name and then I'll just type my membership number, phone number, street address, blah, blah, blah. That's all your basic information and type in your date of birth, which is really important. Your gender. So this is a female only meet. So that's why there's only female here. Emergency contacts. If you're competing with the team, you could put your team name here. I don't think all meets ask this question, but it's just ask what's your best total or estimated total. So I'll just say like around 700. If you haven't been drug tested and this is your first meet, just say no. So divisions, this is the importance of. So first of all, this is a raw only meet. So of course there's only one drop down menu and then division name. So it depends for the meet, but for example, I will be in the team category. So you just gotta know what age you will be on meet day and select your category. For example, I would be in the teen and I would be 63 kg. So how weight classes work is that if I weigh 60, I would be in the 63 kg weight class. If I weigh 63 and I plan on weighing in exactly at 63, then I would select 63. But for example, if I am 53 and I'm not planning on cutting down to 52, I would be in the 57. So the number is like your top 
number. So I weigh around 60, so I would say 63. And you can add more divisions. For example, this is still raw. I can compete in the open category. Open just means everyone can compete. Of course, it's way more competitive because it's with every single age group, but they do rank you based on your points, not how much you lift. So if you're a younger age, your points will be a little bit higher than someone in like the junior class. If you lift the same weight, you will have a higher score. So I would say 63. So for example, I can register for two divisions and I would be ranked in each division or you could just register for one which I think if you're a beginner just do one and you have to pay the registration fee and yeah so this is how you register also in some weeks you can do either a full squat bench deadlift competition or you can select and do a bench only so there are people who just go just to do bench and you still follow the order as everyone else does except you just don't squat and you don't deadlift so on the registration that i just did there wasn't an option for that but on some meets there is an option to do a bench only and after you have registered at least the week before your meet you will get an email with exact times of when you're competing and when you have to go to weigh in and all that kind of stuff and usually there's also a live stream link and additionally there's this really cool thing called lifting cast Basically, this website is lifting cast. So if you go here and you go to home, here are a bunch of other meets. And for example, if you click here, you can see the people who are already signed up and you can also see the roster and see what session and what platform and what flight you're in. So this is really important. So for example, if you're this person, you're in session one, platform one, flight A. And during the whole competition, this is how you keep track of how everyone else is doing and when you're supposed to go up and where to enter numbers and all of that kind of stuff. So you definitely want to get yourself used to lifting cast. So more detail about how session, platform, and flights work. So first of all, there are platforms. So platform is like the literal thing that you stand on. Most local meets will run with only one platform, but like up to national meets, they have five platforms running at once. So you only want to focus on your platform, but as I said, most local beats will only have one platform, max two. So just know which stage you're competing on. So that is your platform. And next, your session. So usually there's a morning session and an afternoon session. And if you're in morning, you're session one and afternoon, you're session two. And different sessions have different weigh-in times. So you only wait in two hours before you compete for USAPL. So for example, at my last meet, there was only one platform. So I was on platform one and I was in session one, which means I compete in the morning. And then within a session, there are flights. So usually in local meets, there's flight A and B. At nationals, there's flight A, B, and C. So how flights work, everyone in your flight will take the first attempt squat. And then we will go back to the first person in that flight and everyone will do their second squat and then the third squat. After your first flight finishes squat, then the second flight will start squatting. So everyone in the second flight will do the first squat, their second squat, and then the third squat. And after that, there will be a short break. And then flight A will do the benches now. So they will do bench one, bench two, bench three. And then flight B will do bench one, bench two, bench three. And then they go back to flight A for deadlifts and then they do one, two, three, and then flight B will do one, two, three. And that is it for session one for both flights. And then you will move on to session two, which is in the afternoon for their flights. There will probably be two flights in there as well. And they will do the same order as they did with session one. So next I'll talk about what to bring. First of all, bring off the equipment. So equipment has to meet the speculations of the Federation for local meets and has to be on the approved list for national meets. So make sure to check the lifters handbook to see if your equipment follows the speculations or not. Some things I recommend are belt, wrist wraps, knee sleeves, shoes, a shirt, underwear, and a singlet. Also, make sure to pack some food and drinks, something that you usually take. Don't try anything new on a day of the meet because you don't know how your body will react to that. Also, bring some Advil or stuff like that just in case. And also bring a sheet with the numbers you want to hit at the meet so you know what you're doing. And just some headphones in your phone so you can listen to music. And also, don't forget your membership ID. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the day of. First of all, you want to get there early and familiarize yourself with your surroundings, the competition room, and also the warm-up room. And usually you have to check in and after that, go to where the weigh-ins are and wait there to be weighed in. So everyone has to weigh in. Even if you're in the highest weight class, you still have to weigh in. So in the weigh-in room, 
you can strip down or you don't have to if you don't want to and they will take your weight and there they will ask you for two things one is your rack height how high you want the rack for squatting and if you want the things to be in or out usually people go out the only time people would use in is if they're grabbing like at the edge of the bar which i'm assuming you don't do that and for bench they need your rack height and also the height of your safeties don't set your safeties very high because if you do touch them then the lift doesn't count so it's better to set them a little bit lower because there are spotters around you and the other thing that they will ask for is your first attempts so your first squat your first bench and your first deadlifts and i'll talk more about first attempts later okay so now let's talk about warming up so i have between five to seven warm-up sets and i start warming up 30 minutes before my attempt by this time everyone's name will be on lifting cast so you can see how many people are ahead of you or if you're the first one and stuff like that so usually people take around 40 seconds to compete so if there's eight people before you then that's probably going to be five minutes also i take five minute breaks between my warm-up sets to get my body used to waiting between my attempts and also don't do anything too different from your usual warm-ups and lastly you will be sharing the rack with the people around you so don't like just grab a rack and not share with other people there is always more people than racks available so just work together and we all load plates for each other and ask each other like what's your next warm-up and we all help each other so just be a nice person also the order of who competes first is always by the lightest weight to the heaviest weight that's on the bar if someone is starting with a 50 kg lift and the next person is starting with the 60 kg lift then the 50 kg will lift before the 60 kg lift and that's because they can load the plates easier that way if two people are lifting the same weight then they order you by a lot number all right so now to the actual like meat itself you get three attempts for squat bench and deadlift and only your best successful lift will be counted towards your total so if you successfully lifted all nine of your lifts only your third attempts will add up but for example in my meet in september i got my third squat i missed my second and third bench but i got my first bench and i got my third deadlift so to sum up my total it will be my third squat plus my first bench plus my third deadlift so only the best successful lift Will be counted towards your total so for your first attempt or also called a opener i highly suggest you go safe with this especially if it is your first meet so usually this can be something you can hit anytime any day like even if someone at like 4 a.m like kicks you out of bed and gives you five minutes to warm up like can you hit that lift if it's yes it's a safe opener or i could say like rp 67 or something you can triple your second attempt is usually around RP 7.5 to 8.5 and your third attempt is around RP 9 to 10 and that's usually when you go for PRs. The thing is if you fail all three of your lifts, you're disqualified and you can't compete anymore. So if you fail all three of your squat, you can't bench and delve. You're just out of the meat. So that's why I really suggest to open pretty safe and make sure it is something you're 100% sure you can hit. Also, if you fail a lift, you can't hit something lower than that. So you can't like, for example, open with 100 kg and then after you fail it, say, oh, I want to go down to 90 kg. You can't do that. So you can only go up or stay the same amount if you miss the lift. So that's why I say again to open safe. So when you compete, there's going to be judges around you. So there's a judge right in front of you. That's the head judge and that's the judge that gives your commands. And there are two side judges, one on your left and one on your right. And because there are three judges, there are three lights. So what you want is either three white lights or two white lights and those are all considered good lifts but if you get three red lights or two red lights so two red lights would mean you get one white and two red then that lift does not count so each judge will be judging you on the things i will mention later and if your lift violates any rules or it wasn't successful or something happened that isn't supposed to go that way then they would give you a red light so usually you will be waiting either behind the stage for your turn and everyone lines up and at the end there's chalk so make sure to chalk it up before you lift and you wait on the side until they say bar is loaded so when they say bar is loaded that's when you can step on the platform so you have one minute from when they say the bar is loaded to do all your setup things and for squat and bench it is to receive the start command and for delet it's for when you start picking up the bar so if you don't receive the start command for squat and bench or you don't start the lift for deadlift within the one minute you'll be disqualified and you just leave and the next person comes up 
And next we're gonna go over the most tedious part which is the commands and what they check for to see if the lift is good or not. So for squat, there are two commands. There's the squat command and the rack command. So after they say the bar is loaded, you go on to the platform and do your setup thing and do what you usually do and unrack the bar and walk it back about two steps. And after that, once all three judges see that you stop moving, they will give you the start command and usually they will put their arm down and say squat. And then after that, take your time. You don't have to squat right away after they say the squat command. So after they say squat, I usually take a deep breath, get ready, get tight and do my squat. And you have to reach depth, which is the top of your knee is higher than the crease of your hip. Your side judges and your front judges will be looking really carefully to make sure you hit depth. And if you don't hit depth, then that's a failed lift. Even if you stand it up and follow everything else, you have to hit depth. So that's why in training, it's really good to video yourself. Make sure you hit depth every single time. So after you hit depth and you come back up, you don't have to wait at the bottom. Don't hurry up and try to rack the bar. You have to wait for them to give you the rack command. Rack! And they will only give it if you're motionless. So all you have to do is just stand up and stand still. And once the head judge says rack, then you rack the bar. And usually racking the bar is really easy because spotters will actually help you rack the bar. So you don't have to do much work. So some other reasons why you might get a red light for squat is that your foot moves after the squat command or before the rack command. So you can't move your feet back and forth after they give the squat command and before they give the rack command. Also, downward motion of the bar after you start ascending. So if you go down, fine, and you hit depth, right? And then you go up and then you like kind of go back down and go back up again. That is a failed lift. That doesn't count. So you can't go down after you are started going up. And also your hips and your knees have to clearly be locked out before receiving both commands. So if it looks like you have soft knees, they won't give you the start command and they won't give you the rack command. So make sure your hips and your knees are locked out. Lastly, another reason why people fail is where you're supporting your elbows on your leg. And this is pretty rare, but this is a reason for a red light. Next, we're gonna talk about the bench press. For bench, there are three commands. There's start, press, and rack. So once you go on stage for a bench press, as usual, take your time and set up because one minute is much longer than you think it is. And there'll also be a person who can give you a handoff. If you don't want a handoff, just let them know and do whatever you're used to in training. If you are giving a handoff, give them really clear instructions on what you want them to say and when you want them to hand it off. So usually I just tell them the same thing I do in training, which is once I say, okay, I want him to count three, two, one, and then hand it off. So just tell them what to do so you're not surprised at when they hand off the bar. After they have handed you the bar fully, they would kind of like run to the side so the head judge can see you. And once they see that your head, back, and butt are on the bench and your feet are flat on the ground, they will give you the start command. Start. And also your elbows have to be locked up to receive the start command. Once they give you the start command, same thing with squats, you can take your time with starting the lift. You don't have to start right when they say start. Start the lift and you can go down. And at the bottom, you have to wait for the press command. Press. And they will give you the press command after they see that the bar is motionless. And once they give the press command, you have to push the bar back up. If you wait too long at the bottom, they're just assuming you can't lift it. So don't wait like a few seconds after they give the press command. I don't know why anyone would, but you have to press it right or right after when they say press. But also you can't press the bar before they say the press command. So after you have finished pressing the bar all the way up, make sure your elbows are locked and wait for the rack command. And they will only give you the rack command if you are motionless. So same thing with squat, don't rush to rack the bar. So once the head judge says rack, then spotters will also help you rack the bar. And that's when you can move your feet and move like everything else. So a few ways you can fail the bench press is first of all, you fail to lock out the bar. You have to be fully locked out at the very top. Next, similar to squats, the bar can move down once it has moved up. Next is moving of your head, your shoulders, and like your butt during the lift. So your butt has to stay on the bench the whole time from the start command to the rack command. And if you lift any of that during the lift, then it's a failed lift. Also for USAPR, your whole foot has to be flat on the ground. Your foot can't move at all. So if it moves, then it's also a failed lift. And lastly, we have deadlifts. So deadlift is the easiest. There's only one command, which is the down command. So basically when you walk up to the platform, you do your setup thing and there's no start command. So you just start the lift whenever you want to within that one minute. And after you have lifted the whole thing up and locked out, 
they will give you the down command down. and that's when you can lower the bar so don't lower the bar unless if they say the down command so of course you can miss the lift if you don't follow your commands but some other ways so first of all is that you fail to lock out fully so your hips and your knees have to be locked out 100 percent next is downward movement in the bar so same thing if you start going up and the bar goes down before going back up again even if you finish the lift it doesn't count because you can't have downward motion of the bar next is supporting the bar on your thighs or hitching the bar up if they can see that the bar is on your thighs and you're just trying to drag it up your thighs at the very top of your deadlift then it doesn't count next is foot movement before the down command so you can't move your feet before they give you the down command because you have to be still. Some people do move their feet after they give you the down command. For example, if you pull sumo and you stand really wide, you can like shift your toes inside so the bar doesn't hit your toes on the way down, but this is only after they give you the down command. And lastly, it's lowering the bar without control. You can't drop the bar and you have to kind of control it down. It doesn't take that much energy to control the bar down, especially if you can lift it up. So just keep your hands on the bar and control it down instead of just dropping it because that is not allowed and after you have competed you walk off the platform usually on the other side and you go to a desk where you put in your next number so you have one minute to tell the people at the desk your next attempt so that's why i say it's really good to have an attempt selection sheet where you have things planned out so you know what numbers you want to hit next and for third attempt deadlifts, you can change your attempt up to like before they give the bar is loaded thing. People only do that if they like see the person before that failed the lift and they want to like lower the number so it's safer. It's like for rankings and like for national competitions, people like would change attempts last minute to like ensure a placing or stuff like that. So you shouldn't worry about that for your local meet. Just after you have lifted, just go to the desk and tell them your next attempt. And now I'm just gonna give some general tips that I think are really helpful. So first of all, before the meet, try to train at the location or lift with like approved equipment. So for example, a power bar for deadlifts, if you're used to deadlifting on a deadlift bar and like the bench, or calibrated plates and that kind of stuff so if you train like in a commercial gym make sure to train on competition equipment so you won't be shocked of what you feel midday also have someone give you commands for all three of your lists especially if it's your first time competing so that way you won't like get a lift and then miss the commands so have someone give you commands at your gym when you work out next it's so important to read the lifters handbook like everything you need to know is inside it's gonna be more detailed than this video but definitely read your lifters handbook so you won't be surprised at anything that comes your way also i suggest you to not cut weight for your meat even if you are at the bottom of your weight class if you're not going for records which you probably aren't on your first meet then don't cut weight because that just adds an extra layer of uncertainty because when you cut weight you can lose strength so i highly recommend not cutting weight tip number four is to go nine for nine which means getting all of your lifts instead of going for a really risky prs while it is nice to hit a pr you want your first meet experience to be good and to feel confident with it so go nine for nine even if it means leaving a little left in the tank because in the end, if this is your first meet, anything you lift is a meet PR. And meet PRs are much more important than gym PRs. Tip number five is to bring either a friend that lifts or a family member or a coach if you have one to your meet so they can make sure you are where you have to be at certain times. And also they can put chalk on your back for squatting and also they can hold some of your stuff like your attempt selection sheet. Also they can hold your headphones in your phone and also they can videotape your lifts because you're gonna post them on Instagram. But you don't need a person because I literally went to nationals by myself as like a 17 year old. So you can still do it without a person. It's just much easier with someone around. And my last tip and most important tip is to have fun. Essentially you're competing with yourself and trying to better yourself. So just have fun and enjoy the experience because it goes by really, really fast. Even though like on paper, it feels like a long time, everything will go by fast and before you know it, you'll be done. And so try to enjoy yourself and also make new friends. Most people at powerlifting meets are all really nice and a lot of people are competing for the first time. 
and yeah just have fun so that is pretty much it for my definitive guide to a powerlifting meet video if you found this video helpful definitely give it a like subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss my other videos comment down below what else you want to see in my powerlifting basic series and yeah so good luck at your meet and i'll see you guys next week